Уважаемые коллеги. Good morning. Good morning, distinguished colleagues. Well, starting a session on the second day, being the first one on the second day is very difficult, and I appreciate everybody's efforts after yesterday, so intense and successful for everyone here. Thank you for coming. Maybe not everyone is wide awake, but still let's try. As we go on, we call on you to have an open, wide, good old discussion. Whoever wishes to speak or ask a question, just raise your hand or send a note in. Our topic is quite large, regional legal markets and presentation of investment-related legislation of the regions. Although, this is just my personal opinion, that the investment legislation comes second. And the primary thing is the investment environment, the legal framework, and the investment and business climate. It's the triangle between the authorities, the lawyers, and the legal framework that they together should put together. And we need to take into account the regional economic structures, the regulators in place, the specific feature of a particular region in question, and always we need to always make an adjustment for an important factor such as stability of enforcement in the region. Because even where you are a lawyer and predict something, and even if you make a negative, forecast you must have a forecast on your hands no legal volatility should be admissible questions to be discussed as those that i would suggest would be like these if a region is attractive legally speaking investment investment wise what are the factors that drive the investment success the investment appeal what helps lawyers to work in the region? What stands in the lawyer's way? What, what kind of actions or inaction on the part of the local governments? Also, we should not be forgetful of an, of an important, I regret to say, and decisive factor as the criminal legal risks in the region that have and will have an impact on the investment climate. Our panelists, uh, I'm going to mis include Mr. Gorodiski, Andrei Mihalovich, managing partner for Gorodiski and Partners law firm. I'm happy that he found time to be with us this morning. Mr. Sergei Yulevich Uchitil, co-chairman of the uh, Collegiate of uh, Lawyers Region Service, representing Western Siberia. No, he said, he is going to speak on behalf of the whole entire Siberia. Mr. Spiridonov, Tula region, uh, the regional minister. Mr. Andrei Klishas, wearing two hats here, chairman of the Committee on Constitutional Legislation of the uh, Federation Council. And at the same time, his senator representing the Krasnoyarsk Krai. Andrei Alexandrovich, you will have to speak at both angles and unfortunately not yet with us Mr. Semenyak but he said that he is going to join us anytime soon through the St. Pete's traffic well why don't we start our discussion with Siberia and I'm giving the floor to Sergei Yurievich Uchitel good morning distinguished colleagues my talk is the presentation of the Siberian Federal District in terms of its investment appeal and the legal framework that exists there. To begin with some figures, allowing to briefly present the region. The Siberian Federal District includes 12 federal constituents accounting for about 30 percent of the total Russian territory, coming only second to the uh, Far Eastern Federal District, the second largest federal district in terms of its territory, 13 percent of the total Russian population, and legally speaking, 
we have two judicial districts there, the Federal Anti-Monopoly Service in Western Siberia and the Eastern Siberia District. A few words about the economic potential of the region. First of all, this is one of the basic uh, raw materials bases, 80% of the Russian lead, 70% of copper, 44% of silver, and 40% of gold that Russia has available. This is the main mineral wealth deposit of Russia. Now, a few words about the general picture, uh, general legal picture. I'm giving you a chart that you see on the screen showing the total number of lawyers, attorneys, and law firms operating in the uh, Siberian Federal District. What is worthy of attention there is, first of all, the total number of lawyers according to the Federal Collegiate of Attorneys, uh, it is uh, 7,107 lawyers, w nearly 2,200 people per lawyer. Uh, com to compare with in the United States, it is 300 per lawyer, 300 in Italy, 500 in the UK, and 1,450 in Ukraine. So talking about the density of lawyers, versus the population, Siberia is not standing high in this ranking. Another important thing in this table is the number of entities providing legal services. We were not able to find information on Krasnoyarsk crime, maybe colleagues would share that information elsewhere. This looks quite uh, interesting. There's a huge number of law firms announced to be law firms, those providing legal services. On the one hand, the figures are large, but we have never seen those firms as we work there. Actually, this information in the official state registers or st stats uh, are far from reality. Actively operating lawyers or law firms providing legal services in the region are quite few. Now, about the very topic of my talk, the investment climate, a totality of political, economic, social, and legal conditions favoring to the maximum degree to the process of investment in the region. And we think that the legal component there is one of the crucial ones, talking about uh, as we talk, as we discuss the investment climate. And I'd like to discuss exactly this. According to official data, we have three groups of uh, constituents in terms of the level of social economic development and investment potential. This table here has three groups. Group one, including federal constituents with relatively high density of population, more or less balanced industrial and agricultural policy and high level of infrastructure. Altai Krai, Novosibirsk region, Omsk, and Tomsk regions. Group two includes regions with uh, those are highly specialist regions, um, industrial regions, uh, relatively high level of the manufacturing and raw materials sectors. Hakasia, Krasnoyarsk Krai, Irkutsk region, and Kemerova region. And the last group, number three. Have relatively low density of population and relatively low social and economic development level or infrastructure. The Republic of Altai, Republic of Buryatia, Republic of Tuva, and Transbaikal crime. Well, given this breakdown, every group has its key strategic areas of development and priority development areas. For Group 1, it is relatively accelerated development of industrial areas with growth points identified. Group 2 is features of financial support to their comprehensive development in order to stabilize 
uh, the presence of the regions domestically and internationally and development of the fuel and energy complex and group three feature uh, targeted government support and uh, combination use of industrial and recreational potential because Altai and Buratia and Tuva feature unique geographies uh, like the lake of Baikal and Telets, uh, the lake of Telets. All these three groups have their own unique specific features relating to development and require specific approaches to be used if they want to attract investment. One of the key methods of attracting investments is, of course, PPP, private partner, uh, private public partnership, that develops along the following lines. First of all, government contracts, leasing, joint ventures, uh, SRP, uh, PSA, concessionary agreements, and special economic zones. And uh, these are the key development areas in those regions. A few words now about the drive the factors that hinder the development of PPP projects in those regions. Well, the first uh, one um, to mention is um, uh, rather poor a rather poor legal uh, framework and poor legal support uh, and uh, because there's no uniformity across the nation and uh, often uh, legal some legal issues um, relating to PPP projects are either not uh, reflected in the local legislation or is internally contradictory. Then according to uh, various um, uh, polls and uh, studies uh, among experts, uh, the key issue is not shortage of uh, funds, but uh, shortage of information or systematic interaction with pro professional um, market players. Another impediment to PPP projects is the absence of um, the necessary infrastructure. Uh, and some members of the Federation, uh, such projects are taken care of by uh, relevant uh, departments or in others um, they are various types of commissions so again there's no uniformity which is uh, really an obstacle to its uh, systematic development. Of course a shortage of uh, uh, financing is another reason uh, because uh, the, although it uh, ranks only third to uh, imp an imperfect um, legislative uh, framework and a shortage of information. Now, uh, this table rates uh, um, regions um, by uh, the number of PPP projects and uh, third place is taken by Novosibirsk Oblast. Uh, uh, Kemerovo Oblast ranks uh, 17th, Irkutsk Oblast ranks 26th, uh, 26th uh, so only Novosibirsk Oblast may uh, serve as a positive or dynamic example of uh, PPP development. Other members of the Federation are lagging far behind, uh, especially those in Group 3, Altai, um, Buryatia, and Hakasia. But there's the question, who uh, made this rating list? Uh, well, it was uh, uh, taken from a uh, website uh, specifically dedicated uh, to um, the study of PPP projects. Uh, at least this is the only um, accessible info we have found. 
And accordingly, as we uh, speak of the legal component, uh, may I um, touch on the uh, legal services market in uh, no the Novosibirsk Federal District? Here, uh, I would like to um, uh, tackle three aspects. Uh, the um, market of legal services, the spe specific um, uh, services offered by um, relevant companies and factors that uh, are in the way of their um, interaction. Uh, what makes um, those regions um, insufficiently attractive in terms of investment is the uh, absence of uh, independent lawyers uh, who would really defend uh, the investors' interests. As a matter of fact, the only organization uh, which uh, forms a certain uh, system are the bar associations of uh, the uh, Federation members, um, but there are no other organizations of note. Then uh, there's an insufficient number of um, uh, discussion venues. Uh, there's just uh, one such venue, the Legal Forum of Siberia, which has taken place for the seventh time in Novosibirsk. That's the only uh, place where um, uh, pressing issues um, can be discussed by lawyers in association with uh, investment. Um, then uh, media coverage is also insufficient because uh, perhaps uh, both the journalists uh, themselves um, are not sufficiently qualified and the media are, uh, are not uh, really interested in covering the, uh, this subject. Um, now, the regions um, differ in their law enforcement practices, uh, even at the level of the federal anti-monopoly committees uh, that there are in the Siberian Federal District. Um, practices differ, and uh, in the wake of um, the dissolution uh, of the Federal Arbitration Court, I think those differences are going to grow deeper uh, because it is uh, totally unclear to us in terms of uh, prediction, uh, what is going to happen after um, commercial courts are combined with the regular courts. Uh, and uh, this is a negative factor for our customers in terms of the predictability of certain processes. There's no uh, formed structure of the legal services market. Uh, the pricing mechanism there is unclear for the federal uh, for the Siberian federal district uh, um, uh, I can say that uh, hourly rates are very seldom used in this district uh, uh, the Mm, pricing practices are totally intransparent, and competition uh, among uh, legal uh, uh, among law firms uh, in the Siberia region uh, is based on uh, prices rather than the quality of service. Um, also, uh, in spite of the fact that foreign law firms are present in the region, along with uh, Moscow firms uh, and local firms, uh, it is uh, very seldom uh, that uh, the experts of companies and corporate entities uh, are used. Uh, our company has taken part in the assessment of certain uh, bills and, uh, and the development of uh, bidding documentation. I believe that many law firms would be interested in uh, interacting here, but uh, there's no such initiative uh, um, coming on from the on the part of the local governments and the 
crisis, the economic crisis has affected uh, the um, uh, legal market of the uh, region. It's the buyer's market now because the buyer determines the um, uh, supply of services in the market. Uh, now I'd like to characterize our customers, our clients. Um, uh, some or most uh, reveal a poor understanding of the essence of legal services. Uh, s some still fail to understand that uh, our legal services, much like uh, our taxi service or something else, uh, and has to be paid for and um, also another common uh, situation is when external uh, counsel is sought uh, not when the problem arises but uh, after uh, um, serious obstacles are encountered uh, and of course companies uh, uh, first uh, try to use their internal um, Con, uh, legal consultants uh, and uh, only after that do they um, resort to external help and uh, the bulk of our clients uh, are uh, major financial industrial groups like Yevraz, Rusal and these clients are mostly present in Moscow not uh, regionally where the um, uh, uh, upstream uh, facilities are located and all the decisions are made in Moscow. As regards our um, medium size or small clients, uh, well, they are mostly uh, small enterprises and uh, uh, do not use legal services widely. Uh, we often work on subcontracts and other company uh, firms work on subcontracts and uh, although uh, a um, client's project uh, is carried out uh, in the region, our clients, most of them, try to use the services of either global foreign uh, firms or Moscow firms uh, who uh, subcontract uh, local law firms. So there's no direct interaction between the client and the uh, uh, service provider, legal service provider, which affects the professional quality and price of those services. And uh, finally, uh, factors that um, uh, stand in the way of the development of local uh, law firms. There's a shortage of uh, qualified um, lawyers and although we have more than 40 uh, universities uh, training lawyers, most of them are, are unwilling to interact with law firms and um, training uh, specialists um, fit for the contemporary uh, market. Um, for example, the training of um, uh, future members of the bar, it is uh, not fashionable to work as an attorney uh, at law or uh, lawyer for the defense uh, among students. Um, then uh, uh, we have very uh, uh, poor interaction or cooperation among law firms. There are very few examples when several uh, law firms uh, cooperate. And I must also uh, point out uh, some organizational uh, obstacles uh, uh, and the huge time difference between Siberian uh, uh, members of the Federation and Moscow. P for example, the difference between Kemerovo and Moscow is three hours, uh, Moscow and Irkutsk four hours. Uh, uh, it makes uh, difficulties when uh, uh, in a situation where uh, all decisions are made in Moscow. There are no public relations uh, services or media uh, um, representation law firms have not 
uh, really uh, uh, come into proper contact um, with the media. They do not promote themselves, and this is also an impediment for market development. And there's no comprehensive approach, again, in transparency of um, uh, fees and uh, prices. Uh, most firms are not interested in that transparency. But maybe you've got uh, in, uh, you've got some proposals. Uh, okay, I'm concluding. The main proposal that I could make um, is um, to make uh, interaction systemic among um, business, the authorities, and uh, the legal service providers. Uh, there could be more uh, discussion venues uh, and uh, 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 deeper use of the uh, capacity and potentials. The, a comprehensive approach needs to be taken. Thank you very much. Um, quite a few, re uh, only a few remarks and a few questions. Uh, you said you've got 7,000 uh, uh, lawyers in the federal district, uh, and you said uh, that uh, there's a huge number of law firms uh, which uh, claim to be law firms but do not provide legal services. Yesterday, I discussed together with Mr. Semenyakur a similar issue. Uh, discussing um, the dualism of um, uh, the profession. Uh, there are lawyers and there are quasi-lawyers. Who are they? Are they professional uh, consultants? Uh, what is the, uh, where does this uh, strange list of law firms come from? Well, the uh, legal services market is not regulated in principle and anyone can uh, provide legal services, even uh, a housekeeper with with, uh, or a housewife with uh, no legal education. So uh, uh, many law firms are uh, just companies uh, which have included uh, the uh, provision of legal services uh, um, in their uh, articles of association, uh, but they can be assessors or uh, appraisal uh, companies uh, and some other technical experts, uh, uh, cadastro keepers, uh, etc. And they have nothing to do with the legal services market. Okay, I suggest now we uh, turn to Tula and uh, Minister Spiridonov of Tula Oblast. Uh, what do you think uh, about the situation? Thank you very much. I was going to make a remark concerning the previous presentation. Thank you for the uh, detailed and systemic uh, presentation. As regards um, uh, the um, difficulties uh, with the um, adoption of PPP uh, projects uh, in your federal district, maybe I was wrong, but uh, I uh, think I heard heard you saying there are no coordinating uh, bodies or authorities uh, to promote uh, PPP instruments in um, members of the Federation. Well, uh, I mean, uh, there are different um, uh, bodies or structures in every member of the Federation, like uh, um, Department of the Local Government or a Commission. There's no system. Uh, uh, from uh, top uh, downward. Uh, well, as far as I know, although I'm not familiar with all the regions in the Western uh, Federal District, uh, West Siberian District, but uh, in Krasnoyarsk, um, there's a um, uh, mm, uh, structure. Um, and Tula Oblast was among the uh, members of the Federation uh, who, that uh, prepared um, a report um, presented by our governor um, as 
a result of that, the President instructed uh, the uh, development of an investment standard, uh, uh, including the development or establishment of a development agency or a development institute. And my impression is that the members of the Federation are actively doing that. And uh, uh, um, uh, the, these corporations are um, in charge of um, uh, developing such projects. Uh, and Tula Oblast has also established such a development corporation. Uh, one of our key um, uh, people PPP projects uh, 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 will take up an area of a thousand hectares. Uh, uh, it's an industry park, and one of the tasks uh, is uh, to use um, uh, PPP uh, tools. As regards um, uh, the legislation um, uh, practices, uh, uh, I um, uh, know that. Uh, there are battles uh, waged with the prosecutor's office, uh, but uh, um, there is positive experience accumulated as well. And here, uh, it is about a different thing. Some uh, members of the Federation have gone further ahead uh, of uh, the federal laws uh, and uh, uh, there's resistance on the part of the prosecutor's office. Um, so Tula Oblast has taken part in the development of, the, of a federal law uh, um, uh, and maybe my colleagues uh, from the Council of the Federation will Tell me, uh, what is the uh, phase of uh, consideration that this bill is going through now uh, for private-public partnerships uh, in the Russian Federation? Uh, because such a law would uh, really uh, um, structure uh, and give a framework for this activity. Uh, it could serve as... Uh a framework within which the regions could uh, um, organize their work. Uh, talking about rating lists, uh, you can trust them or not, uh, but uh, if uh, this is one uh, held by the uh, PPP uh, uh, development uh, structure, uh, it's quite reliable. Uh, or maybe we need a uh, federal level uh, rating uh, system for that, uh, along the lines of assessing the effectiveness of uh, executive bodies uh, on the federal level. Now, talking about my region, Tula region, uh, I will not talk about uh, its competitive advantages, which exist, of course, uh, we are strong in our transportation and infrastructure and industry. We are an industrial district. Uh, I uh, must uh, proudly say that we are the weapons capital of Russia, as we like to term ourselves. <coughs> and here, uh, uh, we see uh, the one thing is lacking is a better uh, investment climate. And this is more than just a competitive advantage. Uh, it's, uh, it also involves uh, transparent legislation and goodwill on behalf of the government, of the regional government, uh, because uh, no uh, amount of legislation alone uh, can uh, really do the job unless there is support from the regional government. Investors must be confident that they will be supported, that they, uh, their activities will not be uh, opposed uh, if they are legal, etc. And this is something we're trying to do in Tula. We are trying to put in place a system of investor support. Uh, we are, have adopted a program uh, for investor support until the year 2030. We have prepared an investor profile. Uh, we expect uh, them to um, uh, be those who support our industry. Uh, we have we have strong on uh, chemical industries, for instance, in, around the town of uh, Novomoskovsk, etc. 
And we are putting in place a number of instruments to attract those investors. Uh, uh, one of them is uh, the above mentioned uh, co Corporation for Investment Support in the Tula region. Uh, the Uslovaya Industrial Park uh, is already beginning to work. On the 20th of May, uh, the, g the governor of Tula uh, signed uh, uh, an agreement with uh, the Chinese uh, Great Wall Company, uh, who are uh, going to invest uh, $18 million uh, in this industrial park, and they will put up a factory there. Uh, this investor uh, signed this contract after 18 months uh, hard negotiating work. <clears throat> if you have tried to attract foreign investors in your regions, you will uh, know uh, uh, what I mean. Uh, certainly in attracting a foreign investor uh, and uh, uh, arranging uh, the uh, s support of this investor, not, which is more than legal support, is really hard work. Um, uh, uh, somebody in the administration uh, helps uh, to um, remove administrative barriers and arrange legal services and simply accompany the project from uh, the first steps to full completion. Uh, I would say a lot of uh, legislative and uh, legal f uh, framework is already in place. For instance, uh, we have uh, an investors club uh, under the aegis of the regional administration. We are a pilot region uh, to introduce the open government system. Uh, within this uh, uh, system, uh, which promotes greater transparency of government work, uh, we have as a, a leading goal attracting more investment. Mm. Uh, we are, were supposed to, to um, set up uh, an investment portal w within open government. In fact, we did more. We uh, made up an investment map of the region. Uh, this uh, is a portal where you can uh, see uh, any uh, potential investment site, greenfield or brownfield, and uh, with one uh, click of the mouse uh, you see uh, the grade of land, uh, the, the uh, title of the owner, um, the infrastructure available, and uh, uh, etc. So investors can see if the, they uh, find a particular site attractive or if it's uh, what they want. Uh, this saves a lot of time because before they travel to a specific location, they can find out a lot about it already. As to benefits, uh, we have a strong uh, system of uh, support measures. Um, uh, there are benefits uh, 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 in taxation. Uh, uh, property tax can be reduced to zero, for instance, um, in the Uslovaya uh, State Industrial Park. Uh, there is a rule uh, where uh, the uh, tax holiday is not uh, just four years, as is the uh, federal standard, uh, but it can be extended up to 10 years. Uh, we also subsidize uh, the services of uh, uh, loans taken uh, uh, towards uh, retooling uh, industrial enterprises. We have a good experience of working with the Investments f Fund of the Russian Federation. Uh, two projects within uh, this framework were conducted uh, in near Novomoskovsk. Um, we have a regional law on the Investment Fund of the Tula region. <coughs> it's not uh, very big uh, in absolute money terms, uh, but uh, it's important regionally. Uh, 
and uh, we uh, use the money towards uh, improving the road infrastructure. Uh, uh, SCA uh, company is involved in this project. Uh, we are building uh, a, a road shortcut around uh, the city of Sovetsk. Uh, the region uh, invests three and a half million rubles in, into that. Uh, but this uh, gives uh, 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 this creates 500 jobs, and uh, it uh, will remain uh, the uh, property of the Tula region after it's completed. A few uh, more observations about what we do in Tula. We are, have uh, uh, this uh, the uh, system for online follow-up of investment. Uh, this is an instrument where uh, we can uh, have online tracking of uh, every uh, step uh, in the investment process from the first application until the completion of the project. Um, this uh, is uh, a transparent system. Uh, um, Tula was one of the pilot regions uh, um, among the 22 um, uh, Russian regions who were involved in the presidential program uh, for this, and we rated sixth uh, among the 22. Uh, in the year 2012, um, we had committed more than uh, 90 billion. Uh, to this uh, project. Compared to large cities uh, such as Krasnoyarsk, etc., um, the figure may not sound so impressive, uh, but uh, for our region with a population of one and a half million people altogether, this is quite a lot. So, um, what we need today mostly is uh, this federal law on our public-private partnerships. That's uh, on our wish list. Thank you. Uh, questions? Yes, please. Uh, make sure you introduce yourself. And you'll need a microphone. I'm Andrei Sichov of Volga River uh, Law Firm. I have a question. Um, I uh, looked up up the website of uh, the Tula Regional Government, and I saw uh, that you are a minister of the Tula region, and uh, your uh, job description uh, is uh, implementing the Open Region uh, uh, program and uh, ensuring uh, cooperation with other regions of the Russian Federation and of uh, uh, other national states. I looked up Kaluga, which is what you typically do when you want to see all the innovative things in Russia, and I saw that they don't have uh, a similar official there. Are you the first one of your kind? Uh, being um, uh, the official uh, uh, officially responsible for increasing the investment attractiveness of your region. Uh, it is true, my job is a new one, newly created. Um, uh, be before that, I was a minister for Tula Region Investment Policy, but then we re reorganized uh, uh, functions and uh, uh, the Development Corporation was set up, uh, and it's now in charge of investments. Uh, and my job uh, is this open region program and investment attractiveness of the region. Uh, the governor uh, sets uh, a great store by that. Ele electronic government uh, and open uh, services is uh, also what I do. Uh, and it's not just investment, it's also utilities, education, and all those other areas that are covered by this uh, open government structure. I was pleasantly surprised to hear some of the things uh, that you mentioned, some of the examples of what you do in the region. Uh, I like the idea of the investor profile 
uh, a simple uh, but uh, uh, very effective mechanism, I would say. Uh, online tracking of investments uh, that also sounds like a great idea. Uh, other regions might also d benefit from that. I'm sure to tell my colleagues in Arkhangelsk about this. There is one thing that I'm not quite sure uh, of. Uh, you, uh, you, you said interaction uh, is not an issue in Tula. I'm sure it is in many other uh, places in Siberia, for one. So um, some things may be good for Tula, but they're not necessarily equally good elsewhere. Now, let's move uh, into Moscow and listen to Mr. Gorodisky and what he has to say. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me uh, to speak here. I'm uh, grateful uh, to uh, the previous speakers for uh, the m most uh, interesting and uh, attractive presentations they uh, made before me. Um, I um, come from Moscow, uh, where um, less than 30% of what we do is connected with uh, working in the regions. Uh, but still, I suppose I have some experience to share with you, um, including government relations uh, and uh, work towards uh, improving uh, the legislative frameworks. Uh, we are also have uh, more than 20 years of experience of working with foreign investors, and we have some knowledge of what it is that foreign investors want. Uh, uh, let me skip this uh, thing, which is, uh, I suppose, self-explanatory. Uh, let's simply put it like that. The uh, investment attractiveness of a region, generally speaking, uh, and I mean for the foreign investor, is uh, lies within uh, the framework of a developed and modern legislation. Uh, call it a concept, call it uh, a project, a program, whatever, for uh, uh, attracting investment. Uh, the investor needs to know what uh, the regional government uh, really intends uh, what uh, they want to develop, uh, what sort of investment they are expecting, uh, both in amount and in uh, in kind, in quality. Secondly, um, investors want to see uh, effective legislation for public-private partnership. Uh, we know that on the federal level, uh, this is uh, tardy and this is not happening quickly enough. Uh, some regions are more advanced that. Uh, next, uh, uh, tax breaks and tax benefits that are available, and they are available in some regions uh, under different schedules. <coughs> and uh, 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 last, not least, uh, it is the implementation practices for all this uh, local legislation. Uh, I'm not even talking about uh, the practice of local courts implementing federal legislation. I'm sure uh, this will improve uh, uh, even after the merger of the two court systems, etc. But what uh, investors need uh, is a clear cut and uh, consistent um, implementation practices. That's what investors look to, uh, both foreign and Russian investors. Um, foreign investors foremost, because the legal environment is what they uh, need to see before they do anything. Russian investors can sort of make mental adjustments for that. We are all um, are prepared to make some reservations and uh, we can trust in informal rules. Uh, now, foreign investors uh, don't do that. Besides, uh, a foreign investor uh, is really uh, the front for some uh, some sort of uh, shareholders uh, or board of directors, and uh, they are cannot make any uh, such informal concessions. Uh, if you cannot provide a dependable uh, legislative environment, uh, 
no investment decision can be uh, made by foreign investors unless, of course, it's a totally private undertaking uh, where private owners are prepared to undertake all the risks. So that's what investment attractiveness of a region consists in fundamentally. Uh, next, uh, let us look at uh, what practicing lawyers can do to improve regional legislation. Uh, let me share with you one example from our work. When the first draft of the civil code was produced, a number of leading Russian law firms are were flabbergasted. They uh, said uh, that this was a, a rehashed version of uh, the Soviet civil code of 1968 or something. And the provisions uh, about uh, commercial activities were uh, just out of touch with reality totally. Uh, on top of that, uh, there was this issue that we uh, hear about a lot. Uh, it's uh, the uh, s strong presence of Anglo-Saxon law uh, as it is applied to uh, uh, commercial procedures. So wh what we did uh, was we decided to uh, prepare our own draft law uh, for the commercial sphere. We did not uh, touch upon, say, family law or uh, other uh, areas of law. We just looked at the mm, part of the civil code that uh, is relevant to businesses. We did that. We uh, wrote that draft. Uh, and uh, we uh, made sure we were heard uh, at that time um, uh, when uh, the minister, uh, the ministerial position was filled by Mrs. Nabiulina, and then we met with Mr. Narishkin. Uh, at the same time, uh, the Russian Union of Entrepreneurs and Industrialists was working and uh, the uh, Federal Financial Union. So uh, we can say we uh, made a mark. Uh, we improved uh, the civil code, uh, not completely, not fully, uh, still uh, a step forward was taken. Some new institutions were um, set up that uh, were simply ignored by the drafters before. For instance, the escrow account, which we have it now, that was the result of ordinary legal practitioners once they have understood once they had understood the real needs and here our interests coincide with those of the society and the government that showed itself local lawyers could do the same with helping the regional governments to improve their local local legal framework thus creating an environment to work in and to increase the volume of their operations and every practitioner is interested in that but that will never come from heaven. Uh, it only happens where you have a normal legal framework where businessmen can come and work there and you need to go and create that environment. Governments have a plentiful of concerns. Uh, they sometimes don't even have time to take care about improving the legal framework. Why don't we try to be proactive so that you try to make yourself heard and that your proposals on improving the local the appeal of the local framework could be done. Who should do that? Every legal practitioner could do that. They all of them could get together through a non-commercial, non-for-profit partnership, like something to promote the development of local, local legislation. And the leadership should belong there to, of course, to the local bars of attorneys, um, those pooling together the legal practitioners, firms that 
my colleague mentioned before me are not just shell firms but actually operating ones and I think the chambers, the legal chambers or boards of lawyers could do that. As for the local governments, what is their role in the development of this legal framework? I've mentioned three or four times only during this forum, forum that uh, there is an obvious fact that any just any jurisdiction that has achieved significant successes in the social economic development all developed countries all BRICS member countries all countries that strive for becoming similar to BRICS all of them pay lots of attention to the development of the legal services market because that is that goes beyond legal services it's not a service of a hairdresser or a taxi or, or a taxi driver but that requires political realization of the situation it's more difficult for us to realize that because of our history and the legal nihilism that we have existed here but still we must take our steps forward and the authorities must realize how important is that is. This is the fourth legal forum. We have fewer participants this time from the UK or US, uh, but previously we had most senior people here. Even there were open polemics uh, with Mr. Medvedev, if you remember that, about the polarization of their own legal systems and their own regulation of the legal services market. Just look at the importance that the Americans and British pay to they must have done it all so it would seem but they pay a lot of attention to doing this. All emerging economies also have very serious regulation in place, relevant and developed. If you want to have a very good legal framework for investment at the regional level included, the local governments must pay tons of attention to comprehensive measures to support and promote the markets for legal services. We practitioners have lived without that for 22 years without any government support, sometimes even in spite of what the government has done, and we can survive. But the, my topic is different, the point is different. If you understand well the political advisability of doing these things, that should be done. I will not abuse your time, but one of the tools there would be to use budget funds for consulting only local only for the sake of local lawyers we will be made to start local offices for us to develop local businesses to support local lawyers in some regions we could add value some regions have been developed quite well others are not so uh, legal practice there is not up to the notch that you can see in Moscow or St. Petersburg but where the contract is concluded not with ourselves but with a local office it could be done in a better way so I think this message to these calling on the local governments is very important. It is very important for them to make the political decision. Political will must be provided there. Who should be their partners in negotiations? Uh, who you need to refer to? Again, uh, the law chambers the most active practitioners there. And another aspect I'd like to mention as to what local governments should be doing, they should pay a lot of attention to the development of arbitration. We are living in the, during, well, it's the period of revolution, judicial revolution with no certain end. Also, traditionally, uh, courts have always been overwhelmed with their workload and it was very difficult to consider commercial cases and the development of arbitration courts 
is a really serious topic. I think our neighbors next room are discussing exactly this. And uh, the law, the draft arbitration act is being prepared and soon to be finalized and i think that is really important to put it through and local governments must pay a lot of attention to that and i mean creation of good legislation top-notch legislation we have discussed it well not only here but elsewhere and i am certain it will find itself it will show itself in the proceedings of this forum but creation of arbitration courts top-notch arbitration courts on the regional levels that would be a huge help to the judiciary and to businessmen who would be able to have their cases resolved as soon as they can with fair judgment provided fair and competent judgment provided a few words more about the role of the lawyers that they could play in the improvement uh, of the legal environment in a region that can be done through mediation an intensely discussed topic recently i think mediators the the best nominees for mediators uh, could be or would be the legal practitioners who should act proactively with creating the corresponding regional associations who would enjoy demand from local businessmen in addressing um, issues relating to dispute resolution. Thanks a lot for your time. Andrei Mikhailovich, thank you for your in-depth analysis. I, many of your points are very close to my heart when it comes to better awareness of your own legal system internationally and regionally because our colleague from Tula just a few minutes back uh, gave us a master class on how to familiarize other people with the local achievements from his own region and another important point is what you said about uh, lawyers needing to take initiative on themselves given the example of the civil code I think that is that was the bullseye because it, if uh, local lawyers are not doing that, no one is doing that. Local lawyers are exactly the drivers, with few exceptions, of course, who could, are really capable of changing this world. Um, we have a question from the audience, I think. Do we have any more mics in the room? Kirill Vozisov, law firm Enmar, city of Vladivostok. I wanted to second Andrei Vladimirovich and Konstantin Eduardovich in what they said about the cooperation interaction between the lawyers and the state. We are not drafting uh, the civil code, but we do cooperate with Ross Rybolovsto, the Russian fisheries agency, and uh, helped a lot. But the problem that we face is the problem of having a consolidated force in place, consolidation with lawyers. I think that's a regional problem indeed. And what I mean is many law firms still keep in the shadow. I have more than once visited or attended uh, such events as this forum. We have the National Legal Congress in the region, but in fact, many people uh, many people view people lawyers from Vladivostok as very uh, rare birds. Uh, it's l like seeing a bear in the street. Many shadow transactions uh, take place there, but why? Uh, why don't you attend a conference like this to get some positive feedback and energy, and then locally we could try to establish, well, non-for-profit associations, uh, whatever other organizations, to be able to communicate uh, with, with the authorities. And I would love to see 
people on the regional level to be much more open so that businesses were not afraid to be part of whatever rankings like uh, Lego 500 we participate there as we were working on the maritime law things thank you Thank you. I have an explanation to what you said. I think people in the regions are very modest. It's not always that you need to be modest, I think. Um, and I would call on our regional colleagues to share their views of the law, their experience and knowledge. You shouldn't be over modest and everything then should be all right. We have another question from the room, from the floor. <laughs> I represent a, a British and English law firm, so you shouldn't think that there is no one from the UK here. We not of all have ignored, ignored this. Sergei Kolchin, uh, while your talk is still hot, let me respond to some points you raised. We all understand that out there in the regions, legal practice is not well developed not everywhere but there are regions with underdeveloped legal practice we all know that it's been developing it's much better than 10 years ago but it is not developed to the top notch another thing we do understand is that legal practice in the russian federation should be subject to regulation because of too much of anarchy we do realize that yes we do also, we understand that there are imperative norms like criminal law, it was discussed yesterday, real estate related issues, not all of them, that can only be regulated by Russian law. Another thing that we do realize that confidence from international investors must be wind over, must be won over, because investment is not done here. Uh, it takes a long and lengthy and difficult process before they make a decision to invest. So trust to Russian courts, confidence in the Russian legislation must be there. But it is not there. Sorry to say this, but it is not there. Then why we seem to be so amazed that foreign investors would refer to foreign jurisdictions as soon as they have a chance, be it in Tula or Kaluga or elsewhere. I have practiced there. By the way, business development is very good in Kaluga and like the approach taken by the local Kaluga government. But that's exactly why they prefer the English law or German law or Austrian law because of lack of confidence in the Russian law. That's exactly why transactions are done Transactions such as not building a house, but building companies who own the building that you eventually want to buy. I just want to make the, uh, the sequence of events right. First, we need to understand that it not all starts with changing the system of legal services provided here. First, we need to pay more attention to the development of courts, of the judiciary, of the legislation, and then, as a small superstructure on top of that, development of legal services provided. Has whoever provided a clear explanation from the government, for instance, why why the heck the Supreme Arbitration Court was pulled with the higher, uh, with the Supreme Court? I've never heard a clear-cut explanation of the merger. I don't mean political demagoguery. But that is the real problem that we face. We do work in regions, but every time we hire people in the regions, I mean hire, when we hire law for, local law firms like in Yekaterinburg, good, one, good firms exist there, or in Tula, or in Kaluga, we're very cautious in approaching the... Uh, the firms we deal with, we, we do check them out very strictly. Associations, uh, I used to be partner for English or German companies. We never put our nose in somebody else's business. If we do not know criminal legislation, we'll never do that. We just give it away to someone else.
to handle it. We just give it away, but first you need to find someone to give it away to, acting as our contractor in that case. So let me step back for a while. We need, first of all, to develop the legal system. And only then we need to think how best to regulate this small superstructure associating the people in this room. Of course, in the Tulu region, everything, all developments have been perfect. Why? Because of Mr. Gruzdev there. And many things have been done by him paying for them out of his own pocket. That's, fa that's the fact. We need to admit the hard fact. We know his business. We know his former business. We know that he sold it. We know it all. But other regions find it much more difficult to do the same. So as Mr. Gruzdev is so happy that he reduced his local government, halved it and appointed new energetic people, but other regions cannot afford to do that because they can only rely on their own local budgets. International law firms who work in Russia uh, should also be considered part of the Russian legal community. We only have five, maybe six or seven expats here. All other lawyers working for my firm are Russians, graduates of Moscow or St. Petersburg University. Thank you, thank you. Time is running out. We are all Russians, most all of us, and we need to spend some time of our own time for free. No one else will do that. Thank you, colleague. Of course, I would not simplify the role of the missing Mr. Gruzdev there, because his main contribution has been uh, right practices and introduction of right practices, rather than making his own disbursements. It's high time we heard a federal legislator from the Federation Council. Yes, let me use this microphone. Konstantin Eduardovich, you have so many topics you are covering during this roundtable discussion that are loosely interrelated and I'm a little bit confused which to begin with. Let me uh, follow up the last person's words. How can the government possibly develop the legal services market? Yes, that's important. It's important because that has some public interest to it. But I must say there can be only one way. I flatly oppose to what the colleague said before me that first, the, I mean Sergei Yurevich who spoke first, that first you need to build some systemic relations with law firms in the regions. Yeah. I flatly oppose to that. Yes, those companies sell their services in the market, okay, let them sell them, or we will uh, have to build systemic relations with all providers of transport services, other services, catering, etc. It's not an institute of uh, the civil society. There's the uh, bar association, you can interact with them. How can we develop the uh, legal services market? Uh, there's only one way to uh, recreate mechanisms or to create mechanisms of reinstating uh, the rights violated. Uh, that's the only way in a uh, state under rule of law. In all kinds of audiences, uh, I um, keep saying uh, the state is not where rights are. Uh, uh, a state of law is not where uh, rights are not violated, but it's where uh, violated rights uh, are reinstated uh, through existing mechanisms and uh, professional services uh, should be delivered uh, to enable people to use those mechanisms and this is what law firms or individual lawyers do and I quite agree with that I believe these mechanisms need to be um, um, to undergo ongoing improvement and perfection and fine-tuning now uh, when they say uh, um, no one understands why the uh, 
arbitration or commercial court was um, uh, combined with the uh, Supreme Court. Uh, that's um, something uh, li like Zhirinovsky's people uh, are likely to say. Look, uh, uh, our uh, civil code uh, was uh, uh, broken down into chapters. Uh, yes, there was lobbying of certain concepts. Uh, we uh, have held the uh, hearings at the committee. We sent that to Krasininikov's uh, uh, committee. So it was true parliamentary uh, work. Uh, uh, we come to a compromise and uh, um, certain things that uh, my colleagues uh, are opposed to, they disappear from the text. But what happens uh, 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 two weeks later? It's not that they are restored there. Um, I find uh, everything in a draft resolution by the plenary meeting of the higher Court of Commercial Arbitration. I show it to Mr. Lebedev and uh, tell him who is the legislator here. Do you also treat it in this way uh, uh, as the uh, uh, High Court of uh, Commercial Arbitration? And he says, okay, talk to Mr. Nichayev. I uh, come to Mr. Nichayev and uh, tell him it's strange. This is something that cannot be decided by uh, um, a resolution of the Higher Court of Commercial Arbitration. Well, he, he said, yes, but what can we do about it? Uh, I have uh, uh, several resolutions by the uh, plenum of the Supreme Court, but the Commercial Court um, uh, decides the opposite. So if it's uh, something you cannot understand, uh, then it means you want this uh, outrage to continue. And uh, uh, you keep saying there is uh, no uniformity of um, uh, uh, law application, um, but let it be on the federal level, at least uh, in the Supreme Court. What is the other mechanism to assure that uniformity? One court uh, interprets this or that in one way, another in a different way, and different federal courts uh, too. And this is what generates corruption. This is the main thing that gives rise to corruption. You say no one trusts uh, the Russian uh, legal system. Um, and, uh, well, uh, the, the, the same, uh, uh, well, let's uh, recall the legal forum in Arkhangelsk uh, or uh, recall the situation in Cyprus. Your uh, colleagues, uh, uh, major Western companies, tell us uh, we do not trust your legislation and your courts are corrupt as we see them. But that's like your roads. If we have a problem with the client here in Russia, we uh, realize that just like uh, uh, using um, uh, your road, you can get to some place. Uh, but uh, in Cyprus, there's no such road. Uh, uh, you cannot uh, file a complaint. Uh, well, is this a better system of legal regulation, uh, although it's based on uh, English law? Now, public-private partnership, uh, um, this subject has been touched upon, but that's a means. That's not an end in itself, uh, private-public partnership, because I'm often under the impression that uh, we uh, substitute uh, means uh, for um, uh, ends, and everybody begins, ju it's just like corporate uh, governance. Uh, everybody begins to build corporate governance. Uh, I've uh, uh, worked uh, at uh, Rossiski Nickel or Interros and I've been approached to law firms, uh, by law firms who um, asked me to 
uh, contract uh, services uh, to them. Uh, uh, but I asked them what was the result of uh, such services. It doesn't matter, they said, uh, you need to have uh, procedures in place. Uh, but uh, I don't need procedures as such. I don't need uh, um, neat and nice uh, corporate governments. For, ex for example, Enron had a perfect uh, system of corporate governance. Uh, but now, uh, if you are uh, good experts, show me how your uh, work in improving corporate governance improves uh, uh, capitalization or other things. Public-private partnership, uh, but tell me, what uh, uh, is missing from uh, the regional legislation uh, for them to attract investors? I am not against uh, adopting a law and will support it if uh, a bill is submitted, but uh, can you formulate the uh, regulation? What, what is regulated? What will be regulated by this law? What is the novelty? What should it contain uh, that is n that has to be regulated by it? Uh, it's uh, in incidentally entitled Regional Legal, Legal Markets. Uh, I uh, believed that we would be talking about the specificities of legislations in various uh, regions and how that affected the legal services market but it looks totally different we are discussing different things uh, so a public private partnership is a necessary thing but it's not an end in itself it's a means uh, so uh, what are those rating lists um, in terms of public-private partnership. It's an absurdity. It's ridiculous. Let me tell you a joke uh, to conclude, and then I'll take your questions, if any. Uh, um, uh, the patriarch uh, holds a dinner, and there's uh, a leader of a region, uh, the leader of a region, and the uh, St. Petersburg Metropolitan um, um, uh, sitting at the table, too. But then Metropolitan Varsinov uh, tells the governor of a southern, uh, rich southern region, he says, we are now making uh, uh, rating lists of regions and you're telling the patriarch that everything is so good and nice uh, with you uh, in your region but in my rating list you are uh, ranked 50th only what is uh, what kind of rating list uh, it's uh, the number of churches uh, um, uh, in relation to population density uh, so you rate 50th he says well, I uh, well, he said I got upset. Uh, we, uh, but who ranks first? Uh, and Me Metropolitan Varsinovius says uh, Mordovia ranks uh, first. Uh, look, uh, um, uh, there are historical reasons for that and everything. Uh, well, he uh, stayed in that. Um, uh, uh, mood uh, for some time and then asked uh, okay who ranks last and then the patriarch uh, said uh, oh, let's change the subject uh, uh, and uh, Moscow ranked last uh, as a matter of fact because he was the Bishop of Moscow what well, does that rating list indicate anything in terms of how things stand uh, with religious life in Moscow or in some regions uh, well of course we could derive something but uh, it does not give you any objective picture just like what we heard about those rating lists about uh, public-private partnerships in various regions my understanding of the issue uh, of the uh, legal services uh, regional legal services market is this this market is very small and because money in um, is held uh, in the regions especially in Krasnoyarsk uh, Krai uh, by uh, major corporation Norilsk Nickel Rusal uh, uh, Rusneft uh, the best lawyers work there that's objectively so and when you need to go to court uh, you sometimes hire a lawyer uh, or get your lawyer and it's it is objectively so, and the 
qualifications and skills and the level of uh, lawyers working in corporations is often higher, uh, especially um, in the provinces. In Moscow and St. Pete, it's, uh, the situation is different. You can, uh, f or Yekaterinburg, you can find uh, some, uh, uh, you can find, you can be serviced very, very nicely by a law firm uh, which is independent. But in other at other places, uh, the markets are small. Corporations pay a lot more. I know what the salaries and fees are in Krasnoyarsk or Norilsk. Uh, it never came to my mind to invite any people in Krasnoyarsk or Norilsk there. What could I talk about the, um, with them? Uh, normally, uh, uh, such uh, lawyers come to corporations not to give advice but to learn something at the ex uh, expense of those corporations. So my conclusion is the regional legal services market uh, can only be supported by the state through a mechanism of reinstating the rights violated. Uh, that's the only function that the government has to perform there. The government has to build relations with uh, civil society institutes, uh, institutions like the uh, Federal Bar Association. Um, uh, I know what my colleague is going to talk about now, maybe about the monopoly of um, the bar um, or something else. Uh, the public-private partnerships are just means or mechanisms to achieve a goal to develop uh, the region, its infrastructure, or um, its social sphere, and many projects are uh, intended for that purpose in Krasnoyarsk uh, Krai, and it's not really an end in itself. It's just a means to attain it. Uh, well, I, my time is up, so I'll conclude now. Uh, although it uh, was a rather confused um, uh, statement, uh, it's because uh, uh, we have uh, touched upon uh, too many uh, issues uh, for such a uh, roundtable dedicated to just one uh, narrow uh, subject. Thank you. Yevgeny. Uh, would you like to mm, talk? Uh, I am quite happy uh, to have heard you or that you have um, spoken before me because now I uh, have what uh, to object to. Well, I spoke uh, uh, for your sake, of course. I understood that. Uh, so uh, um, when I was uh, introduced, uh, uh, it was said uh, that I would uh, talk about the monopoly of the bar. Uh, and uh, I, I will indeed um, keep uh, stick to that, but a bit later. what. Mm, happens is that uh, the Russian uh, society at large, uh, 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 as much as the legal community, are uh, really prone to all kinds of debates about definitions, uh, about uh, defining words uh, or terms. Uh, it's an obsession of ours uh, to uh, explain definitions. Now, the term, um, the catchphrase is the legal business, the legal market, and the charm of the uh, catchphrase is that uh, uh, we sincerely believe um, that uh, when uh, we discuss legal services, or, or although I like uh, uh, another term, qualified legal assistance, uh, I would really uh, suggest uh, considering this. Uh, why do we, or at least uh, that uh, uh, part of our community, uh, which is called the bar, why do we um, uh, really insist on the broader use of this term legal service while it would be better to use or more accurate to use the term qualified legal assistance because this legal uh, assistance um, uh, and uh, I know um, you uh, as a politician and a legislator and as a 
proponent of uh, strict observance of the Russian Constitution because you specialized in specialized in constitutional law, and uh, I believe that we uh, must not uh, uh, view the Constitution as something uh, separate from our actual everyday life. Uh, I still uh, be do believe uh, that uh, when we uh, mention legal assistance, or if you like, you can call it uh, legal services, uh, one thing should be kept in mind. Uh, what we uh, uh, lawyers um, uh, the way we uh, uh, we are active, uh, it it's a, a very narrow sphere of uh, services. It's ensuring the right to access to qualified legal assistance and then it's promotion of justice. Uh, uh, reinstatement of uh, rights violated that you have uh, uh, rightly mentioned as an attribute of uh, a state of law. Um, this uh, specificity enables us uh, to uh, claim uh, we could be viewed uh, separately uh, from or differently from those who bake cakes or make shoes uh, with all due respect for those occupations uh, and uh, for their um, uh, social and un un indisputable social significance we lawyers should realize what uh, the essence and point is of our um, uh, profession. Why are we special? Uh, and when you look at it uh, from this perspective, uh, you find that uh, we do have uh, the right uh, not to be mixed up with all other kinds of uh, um, entrepreneurial or co commercial services. I would go even further than that. I would say that uh, they are sphere within which lawyers operate as they uh, offer this legal assistance uh, are, makes it impossible to consider our services as a commodity. So we are not part of uh, the economic turnover. Uh, it's true that we work for money, where our services are reimbursed. Uh, in this sense, we are part of the market. What's more, uh, and I have to agree with uh, um, Andrei Alexandrovich before that, uh, and uh, I agree that uh, we did touch upon a number of subjects today uh, and I've learned something uh, important and something new for me here. But let me go back to what uh, my colleague said before. He said that uh, the state, in its dealings with the uh, legal market, quote unquote, must uh, provide uh, the conditions for that. But that's not the whole story. <laughs> Uh, what we heard today was complaints, was cries of distress, if I may put it like that. <laughs> In the uh, sphere that uh, everybody here described as the market for legal services, although I, uh, this uh, term doesn't roll off my tongue, uh, in this sphere, we find ourselves in a difficult situation, and I'm thinking about uh, the uh, debate we had yesterday. Uh, let's look at it as providing legal assistance, legal aid. What we hear when we start thinking about that uh, is complaints about dropping prestige and uh, uh, lack of uh, public awareness of uh, uh, the unique n nature uh, of legal services. But of course it is like that. How can it be otherwise? Uh, when we find that uh, 
legal assistance, for instance, drafting uh, litigation papers, can be uh, performed by anyone, even by somebody without a legal degree at all. What can you expect after that? And if the state wants to stay away from uh, this uh, uh, situation, that is collusion, to use a term from uh, the criminal justice sphere. <coughs> uh, we as lawyers uh, find it very sad uh, when we see some of the uh, unacceptable things are happening there. Some people who are stricken off the lists of lawyers or people who never had a legal degree at all are now uh, part of the market and creating a lot of uh, uh, noise there which drowns out the voices of bona fide lawyers. Clients uh, may not uh, be very particular about who they choose to represent them. Many of them are simply not qualified to do that. And that is uh, why uh, probably the, the Bar Association uh, is under such pressure today. Uh, certainly the Bar Association itself is not perfect. And uh, uh, has a duty to uh, clean up its act and uh, maybe strike out some of its members who are not up to the mark of professional quality. But uh, colleagues, I don't want to um, limit my uh, contribution to just mentioning this. But still, we uh, are finding ourselves in a situation which can be described like this. Uh, the uh, lawyers down on the ground uh, don't want to go on living like that. Uh, and the authorities up high, or the uh, governmental structures, seem to realize that it is impossible to continue like this. Uh, this is a classical description of a revolutionary situation, although I would uh, not want to uh, view it as that exclusively. Um, this conference had representatives of uh, m mostly uh, of most uh, uh, countries with developed legal systems. And I was uh, uneasy when uh, we had to explain to them that in this country you don't necessarily need to be a uh, qualified and certified lawyer to um, appear in court. In fact, uh, many more people can do that than uh, a certified lawyer. If we were to clean up our act, if we were to uh, really revise uh, the situation as it's happening like that, then the notion of uh, the lawyer's monopoly would uh, appear in a whole different light. <coughs> For instance, <coughs> why are, can are not the same bar association uh, unite are both people who are practice uh, who offer private uh, legal services and those who work as in-house consultants. They do in France. Why can, couldn't we do it here in Russia? Uh, or uh, to take a different example, uh, we don't have to um, exclude from uh, the Bar Association people who are uh, scholars who um, develop the theory of law. But uh, the practice of the bar must be limited to professionals. 
uh, otherwise we cannot uh, be really be held responsible for the quality of services rendered. We hear voices today that say that young people are no longer attracted to the legal profession. Uh, but look at what what we are uh, having, what's happening today. Uh, you can see uh, somebody in the chair of a judge at the age of 25 and with very little legal uh, experience and certified quality. Uh, isn't that the reason for dropping uh, prestige of the profess uh, profession? Uh, let me share with you some statistics that I'm aware. The uh, Russian Bar Association has something like 75,000 uh, um, lawyers. That's excluding our colleagues in the Crimea. Uh, they're not they're part of uh, that uh, statistic. A quarter of them are younger uh, than 35, and a third of them are younger than 40. I suppose uh, this is a welcome picture. Um, there are so many of them are young people. Uh, I call the age of 40 young age. Uh, in St. Petersburg, uh, the practice of the bar is quite attractive to young people. Uh, you talk about the legal market. Why not? We can talk about that. But let's look at this. Uh, today, some 20 or 30 percent, uh, that's this figure for uh, the big, uh, big cities, megapolises, uh, uh, are found uh, there. Uh, but uh, smaller uh, towns uh, have a much smaller uh, share of uh, legal uh, professionals, uh, which is quite natural. Uh, although uh, a criminal uh, legal services are represented there quite uh, adequately. So when we talk about bringing together all practicing lawyers under one uh, corporation, professional corporation, uh, this means that uh, the the bar association must be part of that. Uh, but a renewed one, not uh, the, uh, not with the status it has today. This, uh, uh, a group is to be tolerated because you can do without them. Uh, but uh, it must be seen as a uh, prestigious and uh, important, responsible group uh, that uh, sees its mission as providing um, legal assistance in keeping with constitutional law. That's our mission. Uh, if we are to talk about reforms of the uh, legal sphere, of the legal market, if you will, we must n take care that we ensure that uh, this new environment is uh, comfortable for those uh, for both those who are now members of the bar association uh, and also for those who are now uh, legal consultants or with the industry or with their uh, companies um, there are grievances about the need uh, for these people to pass examinations to become uh, full members of the uh, intended new organization. <clears throat> but I don't see any problem with that. We just must make sure that we have some mechanism to uh, certify uh, people who are qualified and who are experienced uh, and uh, make sure that we include in this new structure just those best people uh, and not those who are 
doing this work without really being entitled for that. And then we will see uh, that the young people who choose uh, a legal career uh, will typically start uh, uh, by uh, being called to the bar, uh, which is a natural practice in uh, many countries. Uh, and only then can they go on to be judges or cho uh, choose other uh, career. In Japan, I know, <coughs> Uh, they have uh, the trial lawyers, they have prosecutors, and they have judges. These three are uh, uh, three are corporations of equal weight, and uh, they uh, elect four of their members. Uh, to then decide who uh, is going to be head of the Supreme Court of the country. I'm not saying that we are to uh, copy the Japanese uh, example blindly. I'm just inviting you to consider it. And if we do it right, uh, then I suppose uh, we uh, will be able to say that the legal profession is a worthy part of the civil society. And if we do that, then we'll have a w valid and worthy um, market for uh, legal services. And w then we will uh, perform our function in the redress of uh, violation of rights. I'm sorry I went uh, over my time limit. Uh, 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 we have time for just a couple of questions. Uh, um, I would like uh, to uh, add something to what Evgeny Vasilievich just now said. The present uh, state of affairs in the legal market uh, seems to satisfy everyone, with the exception of the Bar Association. The Bar Association withers and dies uh, like that. <laughs> um, it's not part of the scriptures that uh, Russia necessarily needs uh, a Bar Association, but uh, I think we all agree that it must survive. Uh, what is killing us. It's uh, that uh, many people who call themselves uh, lawyers are not worthy of the name. And uh, the uh, Russian Bar Association can't uh, strike these people off uh, its uh, list uh, because if we do, we find this, uh, we put this person into a position which is more favorable than when uh, this person was a member of that because that gives them higher uh, fees, more rights, more freedoms, uh, and uh, uh, the same career possibilities. And this is why uh, the change is needed so badly. Two more questions before we uh, finish. Um, Oleg Norin, uh, lawyer, Crimea. Today our region is uh, uh, busily integrating within the Russian legal system, uh, but we still have uh, a long way to go. Uh, uh, the law of Ukraine is still relevant for uh, our experience. Uh, let us consider the market for legal services in our region. Today, uh, we are uh, evolving towards uh, the uh, Russian uh, situation. Uh, maybe our region m might uh, serve uh, as the pilot ground where uh, the necessary reform uh, takes place. And the federal uh, chamber uh, of the Bar Association uh, could uh, suggest uh, this and uh, act as the engine that will drive this process. Oh, we, we are prepared to be the engine, uh, but we need some carriages attached to this engine to become a real train. <coughs> Six years ago, uh, my colleagues and I 
came to talk to uh, Minister of Justice, Minister Davidov at that time, and we brought some ideas about uh, putting in order uh, this system of providing legal assistance, this sphere uh, of providing le legal assistance. We thought we were saying something reasonable, uh, and this high government official considered our uh, project and he said our gentlemen are uh, do you think you are smarter than everyone else do, do you mm, expect uh, uh, the ministry to help you eliminate your competitors no, let the people, the public, uh, decide where they find legal services. They can turn to to you, to one of the certified uh, uh, members of the Bar Association, or perhaps they can consult uh, a friend he trusts, or maybe he will defend his own interest in court himself. L leave this choice to the people. And that was the end of our conversation. Uh, things have improved uh, since then, although not sufficiently. Uh, at least today we don't hear such things from uh, our Ministry of Justice. The Federal uh, Chamber of the Bar certainly needs to act um, more uh, proactively, but unfortunately uh, the regional chapters of the Bar are not um, uh, active and not energetic enough. They are n n n no longer uh, uh, I know your uh, program uh, called Justice, but this is not uh, really going to happen. But let me uh, tell you a story. Um, as uh, um, an an old person, I think I can do that. The justice system, uh, the, uh, this uh, paper called the justice system, when we first saw it, we also started wondering at what was in it. And we talked to uh, the officials in the ministry and we asked them uh, wh what do you mean by it and they said oh never mind that colleagues you just sign it uh, and be confident that we're not going to follow up on it anyway you know uh, today we're no longer slaves to these papers and we can have a broader uh, outlook and uh, today we have uh, tasks that go beyond uh, this uh, paper, um, but uh, I'm glad to hear that you are not going to adopt this system. Musabir Rustam, Bashkortostan, Deputy for the Regional Assembly, Deputy Chairman of the Council for Improvement of the Investment Climate under the Bashkortostan President. Not a, my topic will be about the topic of this session, Regional Legal Services Market and Presentation of Investment Legislation. A few words about the Republic of Bashkortostan. We have fully developed investment uh, legislation. We have uh, the PPP Act and tax preferences for investors. However, that doesn't work. Being myself a Regional Assembly Deputy, I have the, know that the problem is that is about enforcement. The laws are there. We have the development corporation and we are reshaping the panel of experts uh, where we use international law firms and we use best practices from Russian, com l Russian law firms and we do expert examination of every project and that will be the basis for the amending of the original legislation because we need to know what exact uh, what changes exactly do we need because relying on the legal community that we have in Bashkortostan uh, or the community of lawyers or the bar would not be entirely correct while providing for good experts to come to the region 
to be there to work on projects and then to amend the regional legislation with improving the way contracts are written with investors. That's the way we're going to take. Well, colleagues, you know what? Uh, Klishas and Semenyak have already summed up this, the main substance of this discussion. I'd like to highlight two things. Yes, indeed, creating new mechanisms for restoration of lost rights, that is a way forward. W but we need to remember that the, you need to comply with Article 48 of the Constitution about providing skilled, competent legal services. And highly skilled, de facto, is the phrase that is missing there. It is written on paper, but it is not in, in real life. As the colleague mentioned before me, there is an practical anarchy around and in a situation like that no need to talk about investment legislation of the region because there is no one to draft it or enforce it so we need to address first the basic question I understand why every roundtable discussion here somehow or rather raises the dualism of the profession and the lawyer's monopoly, because that's becoming a crucial issue. But I think it's time for everything under the sun, and we're moving towards its uh, resolution. Thank you for your time, and see you next.